slim fit wall mount 2024. I'm actually doing this on the S90D. Probably not really designed for this TV as much, but it'd be nice to get the TV as flat back as possible, and it can be done. These are the spaces for your standard wall mounts that go there and there, so they're not actually needed for this TV because we're only using the top two Visa hole mounts. And the tricky bit is with the standard slim fit wall mount, doesn't give you the bolts long enough for those holes because they're quite recessed the visa threads in there so i've got two 45 mil m8 bolts there these are the parts that attach to the wall either side these are the parts that attach to the tv marked right and left okay and the top tip as i've done before is to snap these in to the brackets so what I do before I mount one, especially when it's a brand new one, is pull it down and click it in so it's fully in and that should snap back flat. And I usually do that a couple of times and to get it out you twist one side out at a time. Because the first time it's really stiff and first time I did one I'd put it all together, mounted these bits on the wall then tried to snap it in there to put so much pressure on I thought I was going to break the TV so that is not a good idea so it's good to just snap it in a couple of times before it's on the wall each side like so just so you're not putting all that pressure on the TV okay and to take it out twist one side up at a time like that so last year I did the S95C so if you've got an S95D go back and watch that video it's exactly the same this year but I'm not trying it on this one so it's a bit of a custom job I thought I'd give it a bash so you've got the spaces here, this is going to be the 15 mil gap because obviously on the S90, uh, yeah on the S90 or S90D we've got some thick cables coming around to go in the TV so we have to have a gap for those tables so they're not pushing the bottom of the TV away from the wall when it's mounted. So those are the spaces there for the 15 mil configuration you get with the bracket and marked right and left. So that is right and the left. Okay, and I'll just push that back while I mount these. So then we've got the plastic spacer or washer that goes over just to retain it and keep it on the back of the TV. And I'll drop this 45mm M8 in. So you can get them from anywhere else. 45mm is about the right length. So it should just nip up like that and then what it allows you to do is slide that around this plastic spacer stops you being able to take it off same for this side so plastic spacer oh, stuck to the magnet drop the M8 bolt in poke it through he says can't find the hole oh, it. there we go wind that in Okay, and same with that one, it can move around but it can't come out. So I pull these arms up, plate onto each one. So now I can click those in place again so I can get it measured up to help me mark the wall out. That wants to be set about midway there. Same for this one. If I can get it in the right place, so into that, click it in that down okay set that in the right place there I'm gonna mark from the top of the TV down to the center of that hole with the same line across and then I want to know from the center line here outwards to that hole as well or I can measure between them divide by two so I know when I've got center line marked on the wall how far off to mark to that hole it makes it easier so we know what I'm on about to there and there I'm going to call it 265 millimetres from the top of the TV to the centre of that slot. And for the width of these apart, we can just measure from centre to centre. So I, I like to do it off the 10. Let's get it across there. So central there to there. I'll call it 280 mil. 
If it's 280 mil between those centers from the center line of mark on the wall, it's 140 that way and 140 that way. So that is the top of the TV. That is the center. And I've said I want to go 265 mil down to this hole. So 265 to there and 140 mil from the center of the wall out towards here. So if I mark those points up using a tape measure, 265 is there, 140 across, 40 across is there. I can just join that up to make a dot for where my first hole will be. So 140 from the centre to that hole there, 265 down from the top to there. Same for the other side, which I've already got the 265 down. I just need to mark 140 from centre line to that one. There and there. So put that back on there. Spirit level on the top, and I'm just going to mark a, a sufficient number of holes. Put some screws in. Oh, keep. I'll mark some more anyway. That should do for that. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Same for this side. Spirit level on the top. I'm just going to mark obviously that one already. That should be plenty for that side. I'll quickly pre drill that. Then I've got a load of wood screws, so again, chipboard wall, wood studs behind, 20 odd mil thick, so I can just screw straight into that. That is nice and strong enough to hold the TV. If you've got a brick wall, you can use the supplied fixings. They're actually not bad. I've tried them on a few walls. If not, if you've got dot and dab or breeze block walls, I use concrete screws where you drill a pilot hole, screw the screw straight in, and they are nice and tight. You can't pull them away. There's no plug to pull out the wall but use the appropriate fixings for you all. I've just got a millimeter drill bit and I'll probably only do three at the top, three at the bottom will be sufficient. And I'm just gonna give them a quick pilot. Shit, not a hammer. Got a series of wood screws with washers on that can drive straight in. So bracket there, and I'll just get one in by hand. Drive that one in. And before I nip them up tight, I'm just going to put my spirit level on top. I mean, it's not actually that critical on this because the way the bracket is designed, you could put it up drunk and wonky. And you can swing the TV level, uh, which I'll explain in more detail when it's mounted, but it does give you leeway. So nice and level there, just gonna nip it up. Now I've got two in and it's level, I can just wind the rest straight in. Same for this side. That's now ready for the TV to go on. Okay, so I can see, or we can see, I've put these bars all the way out because they've got to drop into those two slots. So it will hook drop onto those slots like so and just give it a push down and it should push back flat and click down you can hear it click left and right 
So like that if you need to do anything or get to anything and then you should be able to just gently push it back and if those bars are clicked all the way down either side it should click back nice and flat. Looking at it from the front you can see it looks a bit wonky so the spirit level on the top and you can just rotate that or swing it should I say not rotate till it's level. And that's it, good to go. So full unboxing is on a separate video, I'll stick a card wherever or in the description. Just for reference, so we've got 15 mil gap from that bracket. TV's 40 mil, so it should be somewhere around 55 mil to the front. So 55 mil from the wall to the front of the screw uh, to the front of the TV. So for a quite a thick TV that's 40 mil thick, 55 mil to the front's pretty good. For comparison, OLED C4 next to it. Different bracket, granted, but that comes out about 73 millimeters. So almost an extra 20 mil back. You can see the difference there at the top. Uh, to me, it's worthwhile. I like the TV, nice and flat to the wall, keep it minimalistic. Look a lot more minimalistic with the cables out the way. I think it should be nice and immaculate underneath. Yeah.